right now. Last time, we, we organized our data, we represented our data visually. Uh, now we're going to actually begin to do some calculations, okay? Measures of center and variation. Real simple, you've probably seen this in the past. Um, and basically, what we're trying to do is, is get, a, get a feel for what's actually happening with the data set. With the data set so some of this will be reviewed all right so measures of central tendency all right what's happening with the data uh, in terms of around the, the center all right you have what's called the arithmetic mean uh, which we typically call the mean or the average uh, and basically what you do you add up all your values and you divide by what would the number you have or the total number you have or uh, what some will refer to as in or the size of your, of your sample. All right, you have the median, all right, and the median is the middle number when the data is placed in numerical order, all right? The data has to be in numerical order to find the median. And let's say you have an even data set. So let me see if I can grab a, a, a pen. So let's say we got one, two, three, four, Five. Let's say we've got five numbers. All right, they're in order. So three is the median. Real simple. But let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, now visually, we know the median has to, it, it splits the data in half. It's somewhere in between three and four. Okay, so, you know, if I didn't know anything, I would say, well, I'm going to add 3 plus 4, which is 7. Divide that guy by 2, which is 3.5, okay? So that's your median. So your median in this case would be 3.5. All right, so with even data set, split your data in half, add up the two middle numbers, divide by 2. But make sure now if you're using a calculator, let me go back. If you're using a calculator, uh, insert parentheses around your numerator just to be careful. All right, then we have what's, what's called the mode. Now, the mode uh, is the number that appears the most. So you can have one or more modes, or you can have no mode, all right? Uh, and let me go back, and I, and I may get to it here. Uh, well, I'll get to it on, on this next slide. All right, we have what's called an outlier, all right? And typically what an outlier does is it's extremely high or it's extremely low. It doesn't, it doesn't match the data set. It's, it's, it's on the outside. That's why it's called an outlier. And it almost always throws off your mean, all right? So it outliers, and let's add some notes here. Uh, you know, they affect... We will say the mean, and we're going to get to this, but I'd rather say it here, the standard deviation, and in some, some cases, even the range. So these values or these statistics are often uh, thrown off by outliers or impacted by outliers. And then you have the range, right? Which is the difference from your, your maximum, your maximum or your highest value minus your lowest or your minimum value. And then standard deviation. Now, um, technology is your friend when it comes to standard deviation. Um, it's gonna always be positive. And basically what it's doing is finding the difference between each each data value and the mean, all right? Uh, so it's, it's looking at the, the variation. It's seeing how much each value, how far away each value is from the mean. Uh, the units are always going to be the same. And, and I already pointed to this, that the standard deviation like the mean can be highly influenced by outliers. All right, now here's the formula. Uh, again, I'm going to use a lot of technology with this. Uh, it simply makes it a little bit easier because 
other size of data sets. If you've got 100 values and you're trying to apply this standard deviation formula by hand, um, it can be a little too much, but you can use Excel, most calculators, the calculator that's required for this course, you can just enter your data into, into a table and it'll, it'll find uh, the standard deviation. Now, just, just a quick note, all right? Let me add a quick note. So let's say you use a, 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 uh, a calculator. Now, most calculators will have something that's called sigma x, all right? And that's population standard deviation. We typically don't use that, all right? And then you, you will have calculators that will have something like uh, SX, which is the sample standard deviation, all right? Typically, that's the one you want to use. So if you're using your calculator, make sure you look for SX and not sigma X, okay? Because sigma Greek letters typically are used for populations, and then um, we use regular alphabet for sample statistics. All right, so now let's look at this data set. All right, now notice they gave you a frequency table, okay? Um, and now you've got to remember, you know, connect the pieces, all right? We want to find the mean, the median, and the mode uh, for this data set. And I think I'm going to find it all, the range and the standard deviation. All right. So all you do is you, you, you unpack your frequency table. So it's telling me that three T-shirts were sold in a week five times. Six T-shirts were sold in a week two times. Nine T-shirts were sold in a week one time. Twelve T-shirts were sold in a week four times. So represent your data. So make it a table, or take it from a table and make it a list, because you want to find that median, all right? So we've got 12 values, and you can count um, you got 12 values. The mean, you add up all these values, and you divide by 12. You're going to end up with seven t-shirts sold in a week. The middle, the middle number, all right? Um, if you notice, you've got six numbers on one side, six numbers on another side. So you've got, you add up six plus six, and you divide by two, just six, okay? So in this case, the median is six. The mode is the count or the number with the highest frequency, which in this case, three t-shirts. That's the, that's the mode in a week. The range, all right, so the maximum number of t-shirts sold was 12. The minimum number of t-shirts that were sold was three, so the range is nine, so 12 minus three is nine. All right, now the standard deviation. I use technology. Uh, you can just take your list, put it in your table, and it'll calculate the standard deviation for you. And I may make another video uh, showing you how to actually do that. All right, so now this next data set, exact same thing. We have contracts, sizes, we've got 50,000, 80,000, 100,000, 90,000, 10 million, okay? So again, we've got five numbers in our data set. 10 million is an outlier because it's extremely high. So that means it's gonna throw off the mean, it's gonna be off, 
Uh, the median is not really going to be impacted. The mode, there is no mode, so that's not going to be impacted. But but look at what happens. See, now notice you have 50,000, 80,000, 100,000, 90,000, 10 million, but your your average or your, your arithmetic mean, in this case, is $2 million. Okay? So that tells me that that outlier is impacting all the other values. So that's not a good representation of the data set because it's the median's a little bit better because it's 90,000. It's still a little high, but it's better than 2 million. The mode, none of those values appear more than once, so there is no mode. The range, again, notice how that range is extremely high. And it's simply because of that $10 million contract. That's an outlier, all right? So notice the range has been in impacted by an outlier as well. And the standard deviation, and you notice it's saying how far away is each value from the mean, and it's almost four million dollars. Again, it's all impacted by that outlier. So when you get data sets, you always want to look and, and kind of, and there's some tests that you can use to determine whether a value's an outlier. But that's kind of beyond the scope of this class. But you can visually inspect and see, hey, this this number's sticking out. All right, so now. Going back to our example from yesterday, or the, the previous lecture, uh, we've, got that, we've got our gas data, and uh, we're gonna just find the mean, median, mode, range, and probably the standard deviation, okay? So we've got 28 values. The mean, everybody buys, these 28 people bought about eight gallons on average, seven and a half gallons on average. The median, seven gallons, okay? The mole is four gallons. So notice how the median and the mean are kind of close, um, which is, is it tells me the data says pretty good. All right, the range is 16 gallons, still a little high. Um, but there's really no no outlier in this in this case that's throwing it off because the mean and the median are pretty close and the standard deviation is four point point one all right so now this final example last three examples our data sets they had uh, what you would call quantitative data right Gallons of gas purchased, uh, t shirt sold per week, all right, and then contract size. Those were all values that, that you can perform some operation with. With categorical data, let's see if we could do the exact same thing. All right, we know we've got 20 because we've got three blues, five greens, four reds, three whites, two blacks three grades. We add all those frequencies together, we get 20. So that's our count. The mean, all right, there is no mean color, okay, because you can't take all those colors together or combine them and divide by one, two, three, four, by 20 so that there's no average color, okay. The median, again, you can't, how, how are you going to organize these data, all right? So median applies to, you got to have numerical order. So you don't, don't change definitions, okay? Don't say, well, the median color is red because red's in the middle or, or can't do that. Median applies to numerical values. So don't, don't try to force um, that definition upon categorical or, or qualitative data because it won't make sense. All right, our mold, it makes sense. We can, we, can, we can talk about a mold in this case, and we know that green appeared the most. All right, so that's fine. Again, a range, you can subtract a high color from a low color, so there is no range, and there's no standard deviation. All right, so just to summarize, if, you've got, if you have quantitative data, you can find all those things. With qualitative data, or categorical data, the only thing you can find is the, the count 
in, in the mold, all right? So always pay attention. First thing you need to ask yourself is when you look at a data set, no matter how they represent it, is if they give you a frequency table or they gave you a list, identify the type of data and then make a decision about what you can and you cannot do with that particular data set.